On the 30th of April 1975, after 20 years of struggle, North Vietnam had finally defeated the capitalist American pig dogs with the fall of Saigon. Go home, GI! The GIs finally went home and they would return to a life of obesity and relative comfort. The Vietnamese had sacrificed a lot, more than 2 million civilians and around 1 million North Vietnamese and Viet Cong fighters. US bombing in the North would destroy infrastructure, factories, cities and farmland. War in the South resulted in considerable damage as well. Bombs and landmines littered the countryside. Reconstruction would cost billions and take time. Still, the North had won and they can finally focus on getting the country back on track on becoming a socialist utopia. There were plenty of things to be done. First was official unification, which was done in 1976, with the North and South joining to form the Socialist Republic of Vietnam. Then it was time to deal with the people who sided with capitalism and imperialism. People in the lower ranks were largely forgiven, however those in higher positions would have to go to re-education camps to learn about the flaws of the market. Hard labor, torture and executions would also occur, though to a lesser degree than what people expected. If you worship the god of communism, then nothing really happened, or what happened was not enough. The next priority was to relocate the population in the south. Because of the war, many people moved to the cities seeking greater security. Now they would be moved back to the countryside, either to their old homes or to new economic zones, for the revolution. Some would work hard, some would die, and others would bribe their way out. With that done, it was time to begin the reconstruction. There were plenty of things to do, rebuilding damaged infrastructure as well as factories while at the same time continuing the nation's industrialization, raising agricultural production to feed the population, transitioning the south towards the north's economic model through nationalizations and collectivization. All these goals would need time and good policy making to achieve. It would also help to do each of these things gradually, so as to not cause too much disruption and instability. But Vietnam had a plan. Socialism. Yes, the leadership after beating the Americans were a little too confident in themselves and believed that all this can be achieved quickly and all at once. The revolution cannot wait and the workers of the world So in 1976, the second five-year plan was approved with high targets and as you can expect, it worked. Vietnam is the new global superpower. Unfortunately for the leadership, it didn't work out like that. Plenty of problems emerged. The process of collectivization was tougher to enforce in the south compared to the north. At the same time, the collective farms that were established had low productivity. This was due to a combination of reasons like drought, lack of fertilizer, seeds and machinery, and the collective farm system being generally more inefficient. Vietnam, a major rice producer, fell millions of tons short of its rice target. The reconstruction process was also lagging, the biggest problem being a lack of funds. After the war, the US imposed an embargo on Vietnam and prevented aid from Western sources to help the country. The Eastern Bloc did provide aid and loans, but it wasn't sufficient to fulfill its needs. Industrialization was also struggling as a result. Many of the country's state-owned companies were loss-making, eating up more of the government's budget. Foreign policy was another issue. Vietnam would go to war with Cambodia in 1978. The Cambodian regime was supported by the Chinese, who would retaliate against the Vietnamese in 1979. These wars were expensive and resulted in more money going towards the military. The Chinese would also cut off aid because of poor relations. This made Vietnam more isolated, reduce the amount of trade partners and further depress the economy. If that wasn't enough, the growing population and limited supply of goods would create shortages, forcing the government to begin rationing and cause inflation whenever the official prices were raised. Many people left the country during this time as well. By 1981, it was pretty clear that the second five-year plan had failed. More pragmatic policies were implemented from here on, with the focus on agriculture, like allowing farmers to have plots of land to grow food and keep the surplus as long as they achieve their targets. The integration of the South with the North also slowed down, and the government tried to make state-owned companies more efficient to reduce state subsidies. Still, despite these policies having a positive effect, growth was still low and by 1986, inflation was at 700%. That year, things would change, with the more reform-minded politicians gaining power in the party. From here on, a set of policies called the Doi Moi or Renovation would be implemented that would change Vietnam from a Soviet-style command economy to a more market economy, with socialist characteristics of course. In 1987, a law was passed to encourage more foreign investment. In 1988, a land law passed. 
ending collectivization and giving farmers more land use rights. 1990 would see a corporate and private enterprise law giving a massive boost to the private sector. These set of reforms and a succession of reform-minded leaders would eventually completely transform Vietnam from a poor agricultural country to an export powerhouse with high economic growth. Vietnam would also begin improving relations with China and the US. The US would also lift its embargo in 1994 and sign a free trade agreement with Vietnam in 2001, giving a massive boost to its exports. In 2007, it joined the WTO, further integrating it with the world economy. As time has gone on, it has reformed its economy even more. Vietnam's poverty rate was 70% in 1980, 37% in 1998, and 19% in 2007. While Vietnam has plenty of issues like inequality and a lack of political freedoms, it has still made significant progress that should be applauded.